in this page, uh, I will present you how I have been doing uh, programming with uh, small talk with uh, junior high school students. Uh, so my name is uh, Hilaire Fernandez, and I'm a teacher in uh, in Geneva in public school. So okay, this is the same slide that yesterday. I will not repeat it. <laughs> the same person, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, okay. <laughs> so, yeah, okay. okay. Uh, I jump to the next one. Okay. So, yeah. Why the presentation like yesterday? <laughs> Here. Okay. <laughs> I will talk a, a little about constrained system uh, and the geometric approach in small talk I took on the, the DSL. So, yeah, why DSL with kids programming? Indeed, that's a key a key point in using programming with the kids. So, okay, why this presentation? So, one of the first reasons is I just want to talk about quiz. Um, because a quiz has been doing very well uh, since a couple of years. Uh, we have this uh, very mature uh, morphic Mark three version uh, version uh, of uh, for the visual uh, capability, and it's the system is understandable. Uh, the morphic system is easy to understand, and there there is this nice uh, vector graphic engine. So that gives us a uh, completely uh, vectorial user interface, as you can see in this screenshot. It's all vectorial, so this looks nice. Um, we have this, so I just tell about the vector graphics uh, engine, which is uh, that follow the same API than uh, S SVG. So that's quite interesting, for example, to export a uh, morph drawing to SVG file is quite easy. So uh, here, this is just a, a simple example of a vectorial morph, which is a Protractor. And the next thing I want to talk about, I want to mention a few uh, nice feature of uh, Quiz, which is the, now the handling of Unicode uh, in the source code, um, uh, in the method name, in a, on even in a variable. So this is valid uh, variable. So using uh, Greek symbols. So that's interesting uh, if you're uh, if you are doing maths and you want to have a beautiful code. That's okay. That's a plus. And there is this nice packaging system I want to mention in Quiz, which I find very uh, easy to install. On that, it does not lock you on the, on any kind of repository. For example, for Dr. Geo, I use several different type of repository. I'm using the the Bazaar uh, system from the Ubuntu Foundation. I have my reason to use this one, but I also use uh, GitHub, so I can do I can do both. In Quiz, I will not care about how the the file are uh, saved uh, remotely. I will only care about the, the the dependency on the package. So this keep the complexity out of quiz. So uh, next reason why I want to make this presentation is to show um, an example of an application which is fine turn for a very demanding user, which are the kids. The kids are the best uh, beta tester for software. They will find you tons of bugs. <laughs> they can make your life a nightmare. Believe me, I have experience using Dr. Joe with them, um, but they helped me to make it better, of course, because they, yeah, you have you have ten kids, you give them the software, in no time they will find bugs for you. <laughs> so we can so we can do fine tune application for demanding uh, user. Mm. So if you are interested to know about uh, how to develop. Uh, and use the application with quiz. So Friday, I have a workshop. Uh, I will try to 
show a bit of this. And then, of course, the main topic is to show that the kids can code. <laughs> yeah, they can write codes uh, the old way, not only with tied programming, which is interesting, but they can do it uh, also with code. Uh, they can do math with that, learn by example. Okay. On using small talk. Uh, first, uh, so I mentioned the constrained system. We all know about the Sing Labs. Uh, the Sing Labs uh, work. It was a thesis, I think, of. Uh, I, did, I did not mention Alan Boring. Oh, that's. I forgot to mention his name. That's, uh, that's an error. So I will not discuss much about that, but this means this exists since a long time. I mean, this is not new. Uh, and this system was a very general uh, constraint system. So in education, in the field of geometry, we got some, uh, the first software, I think it was a French, it was a French software from a, a, a laboratory in the Grenoble University, which is Cabri Geomet. I don't know if some of you heard about it. Uh, when I was a student, a, a, stu uh, a student to be teacher, I have the luck to be in this university and uh, the, the teacher, they, they show us this software. So, I have a funny story about that because uh, I was a student to be a teacher and then I have to go in some class and do some teaching. So I want to use this software. But um, the software was, was too expensive for the school. So uh, I can't do it. So that's when I decided to, uh, to write uh, the Tojio. So it was in, uh, yeah, before 2000. So Dr. Geo is, it was the first uh, uh, dynamic interactive geometry system for the Linux system. Uh, here, this is the final version we have in Quiz uh, with some uh, small talk scripting. So what is an interactive geometry system? Uh, if you don't know it, maybe it's better I describe a little about that. So in this kind of system, you have a dependency between child and the parent's mathematical item. For example, uh, if you consider the middle of a segment, uh, this, uh, this, this middle, so this is a point, he has parents, and the parents is a segment, of course. Uh, the segment is free to move. But if you go to the point, you don't drive the point because it's constrained to be the, the middle of the segment. However, you can drive the, the parents, the segment. So in this case, the middle will also be updated to remain the, the middle of the segment. So maybe I'll make you a few demonstrations so you get an idea of this. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. Okay. Uh, we are in French, so okay, maybe I, I switch to another language, okay? Which one you want? Chinese, okay, you ask it. I <laughs> didn't So he's loading, in this case, he, he need to load a specific font so he can display the character. Okay, so, Hernan, where should I go? Okay, I know. This is your call. <laughs> um, yeah, I know, I know the place, so it's okay. And it's iconic, so anyway. So here, this is a uh, this is an example of um, this is a toolbar, a vectorial toolbar. Uh, so designed with the uh, with the vector graphic engine. Um, so let's start with a circle. Oh, I can show you the ID with the segment first, maybe. Uh, 
Okay, this is the middle. So I can't drag this point because it's stuck as a middle. Although, however, if it, I've decided to 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 pick one of the corner, okay, so the middle will be recomputed. So uh, in some situation, um, the, the shade can still change the parents because it makes some sense uh, for the for the situation. That's what I call reverse dragging. For example, if I, I draw the perpendicular bisector here, so okay, you get the idea of this object. I can still, in this situation, okay, I can drag the line, it will move the parents. So that's a bit strange, but it can be useful just for the, uh, for the usability of the, of the interface. Okay, so maybe we switch to... Okay, we make in Spanish or in English. Uh, English? <laughs> Okay. Gringos. Okay. Oh, okay. I would make in English. Okay, new sketch. So I will show you um, a quite complex example of uh, interactive geometry. Uh, this is, okay, this is something I do very often because it's uh, appealing. So we just draw, okay, a circle. I will pick up a point. I will, I will pass in this circle. So the, this point is mobile. Okay, maybe I can give it a name. Here. Then I will create a triangle. Mm. I will do that. And there, and there, okay. Uh, from there, I will uh, construct perpendicular line. So going through the point A, and to this perpendicular to this segment. Then another uh, one from this segment. No, I click too quickly. I'm going there, okay. We can ask for the third one, but we know that the three line will will meet in the same position. Okay, we can maybe change a bit the painting. So we are not too confused. Then we ask for the point here. And I would call it. Mm. I don't know in 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 other country, but in in France we often call it H. Like eight, eight, yeah, I guess. So now we have this. Okay, we have this dynamic sketch. On the okay, when we move one of the side of the triangle, the point H is moving. And when the point A is moving on the circle, H is kind of following a curve. Yeah. So this curve is a, a locus. So we can we can ask Dr. Joe to to compute this uh, locus for us, so we can we can see we can see it clearly. So this is locus. of h when a is moving so we have this we have this nice curve okay maybe paint it here mm. make it thicker so when i move the point you know, when i move the point a you see that h is following this This curve. And but if I move the side, also the curve 
is rep is recomputed accordingly because it's all the position the position of h also depend on the two other points of the triangle see so this is what this is the figure of the kind of things you can do uh with interactive uh, geometry yeah uh, yeah okay so uh so this is the traditional way to use uh interactive geometry with mouse point and click i will say point and click uh this is nice because it hides a lot of the complexity this is all what is about user interface we all agree on that but sometime okay my my personal biais i will say was that okay maybe it, it could be also interesting to be able to do that with code on the not for only for the teacher, but also with the kid. Uh, so I, when I have these thoughts, uh, I think that, okay, very likely it will fail with the kids. That's but Okay, I want to give it a try. So uh, why? Uh, why doing that? Because maybe sometime I may want to have this complexity back. Uh, so to show them to the, to the kid, to show them what is behind the curtain. That could be interesting. Um, and my next uh, reason was uh, maybe to describe the geometric object uh, more um, more in a mathematical way, because when I need to create a point, I just click somewhere. What is a point? Uh, it's just uh, a dot. Uh, when I create a segment, I just draw a line. But what is a segment? I, the kids has no thinking about that. Uh, the next idea was a strong idea uh, is to capitalize on the programming features to have loops to have collection and to use that to make sketch so that was a strong uh, strong idea also so this means that uh, to be able to grow in complexity in what you can do with the programming that may be more difficult with the user interface you can write user interface to manage that but that's my, that will make the whole system more complex. So let's see how I decide to organize that. I, I have several iterations, and this one was the final one, which was working quite well. But before, I had other ones that were a failure. So this one, with this way of organizing, organizing the um, the teaching, um, I have some, I have this discussion with the. Uh, a colleague of me in my school, we sat together and we tried to think about how we can uh, organize lesson. So this was really um, a reflection with uh, with another person, and that's I think that's important. So the, um, I uh, organized the lesson in three parts. Uh, one part is uh, an example. It's a code, and with the results. The next part is a challenge. There are challenges that the kids must resolve. And the final part is a glossary. That's a theory. So you see, the, the way of uh, presenting the, the programming is, this is the fundamental element, this is the theory of programming. They are, they are at the very, very end. So we start with example and challenge, then the theory of programming. So I look uh, just details. Some uh, so this list, this one maybe is the the seventh lesson. So I sorry, I'm sorry, it's, it's French. You don't need to read this, okay? But this is the code example. The kid, the, the, the that is presented to the kids. Then they have the results. So when you writing, you wrote this code. You write this code. You get these results. So they have to they have to type in this thing. Then they execute the code and they must get this result. So they will get error with the uh, okay even when typing. Sometimes at the end they have a different result, so they have to to search for the error. The next step, the challenge. This time they don't have the code, but they only have examples. And these examples are in fact variation of this one. So they they don't need to tie to change everything. They need to understand what they need to change. 
So this means that they need to understand what the thing, what is what is happening there. So when they they are done, they check mark. And the final part is a theory. Most of the time, they don't look at it. How surprising. But nevertheless, it's there. So, okay, this is the collect message you recognize. This is in French. Uh, this is uh, to make a, a rotation, a, a geometric transformation. Okay, this is an, this, these are nested messages. So this one is, is not the first uh, lesson. They were ordered before. And um, the glossary are incremental, of course. So let's look at the first the first lesson. What you, what was the first example there? Okay, just a, a simple triangle. This looks so yeah, this looks so simple for us. I mean so they have to type in, okay, so they start, oh what is it? Oh then they make mistake. What is it, this? They don't at first they don't know what is it. And the, you know, the, the the funny things. I asked to the kid to, to type in. I was thinking they will complain. No, they were excited. Really, uh, that's the, I think that's really the first thing that amazed me. They were exciting to type in code. They were feeling that they were in control and they would get some kind of results. That's, that's really the thing that surprised me. That's really the, the first outcome uh, from, this, uh, from this experience. They were just excited to do that. Yeah, so, so okay, they type in these things. Okay, and then then next they have the challenge. Okay, they are just variation of the triangle. What is the challenge? The challenge is just to, for them to to understand that okay, the segment, there is a start, and there is an end, and this thing must represent the coordinate. And at this age, they are still weak with the coordinate with the x and the y. They are just. This is not something that is really well established for them. So they will do math as well. They will get str uh, they will get stronger in this. So this one, okay, is quite easy. They can they can do it. Yeah. yeah. Then they have the glossary. So in the glossary, just introduction, how you create a new object. I don't I don't tell about that about class. There is no such vocabularies. It doesn't make sense at this, at this level. Then, okay, just, okay, I can mention message. I can do that. Just message. This is message I send to the to the new sketch. Yeah, this makes sense. This is common vo vocabulary. I send a message to you. I send a message to the object. Okay, that's the small talk uh, vocabulary is perfectly fit for that. Uh, this, okay, we say that's, just say that's, it's a point, like this in math. In math, we, ri we write like that. Uh, here, we write like that. Okay, that's it. Then we have the keyword message. Okay, I don't talk about keyword message. I just talk about a segment, and there is two, two point. We need a two point to define a segment. So it, this, so they start to think about a segment. There is a start on this, there is an end. So we make the, the connection with the mathematic as well. One way of presenting segments, of course. So let's look at the second lesson. This is the lesson number two. So what we what we do there, we just introduce a variable. Because before there were no variable, only message. So we introduce the variable. What is a variable? Okay, it's just a convenient way to name an object. That's it. Then, okay, we just, after this look the same. Um, okay, so there, this is a, a scan of a, of, a, of a student. So at first they were, they were not feeling that they can write stuff there. So I said, uh, okay, why, why don't you write the, the coordinate? Because they, they were doing my head, changing the code and see, oh, this point is there, then change and then, they were going from the from the paper to the to the code, and they were doing mistake. They have some problem of organizing themselves. So I tell them just write on the on the on on the visual. You can write down the things. So they start to write down the things, and it gets easier for them. 
and then here okay here they have two rectangles so they have the challenge oh what i need to do because it's only one rectangle so they have to to write more uh segments so they have to add some stuff not only uh modify the coordinate here but they they need to add new line to create new new segments so this this they say this is a a, a swiss cross of course <laughs> in geneva yeah and i wrote that <laughs> of course uh, oh, it's, it's <laughs> yeah, no <laughs> no it's not good okay we have a specialist <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I should remove this line. Is it what you mean? Okay, we will discuss that later. <laughs> okay, this is lesson three. We still introduce some more variable, but this time we use we will use the variable as parameters. For for us, this is very obvious. I can tell you that this is not the that the case for a newbie on programming. And then, um, so we just have the rectangle, the rectangles, but now we have two variable to for the eighth and the width, and uh, we use it as parameter in place of the number. So now they can see what what the interest of doing that. But when they oh I don't have the challenge, uh, uh, but when they have the challenge, they have a rectangle of different size. So oh I just need to change there. So that's so powerful. So they, they just get one powerful idea of programming, just changing the variable. Yeah. Okay, this is lesson five. I skip a little. So here I just show how it looked like in the uh what is the what where the kid is walking. So he has the he has the and the the code editor, he has the result just there. Okay. Oh, this is in French. Okay, this is, yeah, we, with the accent and the thing like that. Okay, this is lesson six. This one was a very interesting. The, they put, the, the kids produce uh, interesting uh, results mm. from a teacher point of view. So they have to draw, um, so the, the complexity, the complexity grow as you can see here, because um, they will draw a regular polygon. Okay, this is the example, huh? and this is the code. I, the format is not well because I, I was short in place. But anyway, so there is variable and there is a loop. Okay, to repeat. So the idea, okay, you just construct one segment, then you will rotate this one two times to do the other one. So the two times repeat, okay, my new segment will be uh, the rotation of the previous segment with the center here and with the angle, which is here. Okay. So just do that. So uh, when they are presented with the challenge, so this, this, this is the, the other regular polygon they have to draw. Okay. So they have to think about what is the, what, what make the, this, uh, regular polygon very specific and also I, I need to add that at this age they don't know about regular polygon uh, this is this is not complicated but they don't know about that this is uh, they get the teaching the next color the next school year so they were doing something that is one year height so they just okay how many side oh easy eight and for the angle, they use a protractor. Yeah, good idea. Uh, for me, I was thinking, like, stupidly, I was thinking, oh, they will do uh, 360 divided by 8. No, they measure. I was really thinking that. So this one, the result was interesting. I took a screenshot. So we have a problem there. <laughs> Why? They have two problems. They have two problems. That's that's funny. Uh, they have two. They have, they just realize that they have two lines. There is w w w one thing that is should not be there. Why? 
Why do I have one more? Oh. Because here, okay, what is happening? I mean, I think this is a mistake that even, I mean, uh, a developer could do. Uh, uh, there is already a segment there. So we don't need to make three times, just two times. But the funny thing is that they show this, they saw this error because of the problem with the measure here. And how they can do that, how they can do that. So there we have a, a dis I have a, um, a discussion with them on maths. Oh, how can you, can you try to calculate it? So, yeah, okay, because they, they can see that the angle is divided in, in equal part on the full angle. So they know this is 360. Oh, we just divide. Because it, anyway, with the heptagon, they will get, they can measure it. They can have the precise value anyway, this, because this is not an integer. So they, they replace here the value with the calculus. So this example was very uh, interesting. Mm -hmm. yeah. I can show you. Oh, it's, it is in Dr. Geo. <laughs> so I will load the, the, I have, so this is example of sketch, and um, I will go to my library, okay, and this is the first one, okay, we had it. Okay, so uh, here, if I want to make the, the same mistake that the, the kids, they did, uh, so here they write down 70. And here it was five. So, okay, they get this these results. Oh, by the way, maybe what we can do uh, as we can key in code with Unicode, maybe we just make it uh, we can name it uh, Alpha. What about Alpha? So this made the code to look better. So yeah, the mistake they have, so they need here to remove one for course. But okay, still the issue. Then here they compute the angle. And they got it right. And especially when they switch to the, the heptagon uh, finishing if I go I would I wrote seven so this will not produce an integer well let's float so when they use the protector they have no chance to get the right value so with this challenge, at some time, even if they get right with the the pentagon, they will have to compute. So they will have to do the maths. That the interesting part, you see. Okay. So what the kid they can do also, they can use a small debugger, so they can step by step execute the sketch. See? And now click. Here. 
Uxê. Uh, with, I don't use that much the debugger so far with the uh, with the seal and seal is still new, so I, I don't have uh, many chance to do that. I will show you. Uh, I will show now now uh, some complex example. A okay. This is. This is more for for senior high school. I would say even fin final year in senior high school. So this, I think that's the, that's a model that a, t a teacher can use. Uh, so this, uh, it, uh, I need to zoom zoom out. Oops, here. What is it? Okay. Okay. So this is the the Newton. I don't know if you remember the Newton Raphson uh, algorithm to calculate the the zero of a function. So the the problem with this method. Uh, okay, here we. So the the problem with this method is that it depends a lot of the on the initial value uh, you have. So here I took an example. Initial value is there, then okay. The tangent line, then okay, the tangent line again, again. Okay, so this this one is this position is quite good to to find the zero. But what is interesting with the dynamic model is that we can very show very uh, brightly to a student. It really depends on where you pick up your first uh, your first value. So this is the kind of uh, I, I'm making the link with the dynamic book uh, again. You know, you see what I mean. Uh, so because this 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 is done with Dr. Geo, of course. So you can have this kind of code in libraries uh, that user uh, can access directly. I mean, uh, elaborated by a teacher, and shared by a teacher, and they can load on the dynamic book to study one topic. So the scripting I've been doing with kids is uh, with young kids. Uh, they're just beginning in computer. We can do nice things, but we can do also very elaborated uh, stuff. That The lesson this is not the le the last one. I think there is still one. So in this one, we show the the val the, the power of collection, especially in uh, in small talk. So the, this is again this is the field of mathematics. You know the uh, I don't know the term in English. Oh, it's the so a self repeating. Uh, not a fractal, no, no, no. Uh, uh, I, I know it, but... Uh, oh. Tiling, I think that should be good, yeah, tiling. So you, have a rep you can repeat one symbols. Okay, so this is a very simple one, two line, then you repeat with the translation. Okay, so here we use, we use collection. So we put, we put the, two, the two segments in one collection. Then after we repeat the process of translating each one. So we use, of course, we use a, we use a collect. We transform, we transform uh, the line and we collect them in the collection. And this is the your new or new collection. We di we don't need variable there or anything complicated there. It's just pure uh, small talk in the idea. So. Uh, this is my my final word on this on this topic. So this is the kind of takeaway, maybe we can say. So what is important is to have to do that uh, in a meaningful way is to have a DSL that is specific to the to the domain. So this is a DSL dedicated to geometry, when you can create point, segment, line, perpendicular, bisector, cycle, arc. Locus, uh, 
or yeah, whatever. And uh, geometric transformation, like rotation, symmetry, reflection, scale, all in the code. You can all do that. So that's the first thing, a DSL specific to the domain that you can use with the, with the kids. So to make this, this DSL close to the, to the kids, uh, write it DSL in the native language. You have the English one, okay, which is the reference, but then to have the native one, so in French, and I hope we can do one in Spanish. So this, this makes the, the, the access easier. Otherwise, this means that the kids, they will have to, to learn the, the programming ID. Uh, on top of that, they will have the foreign year vocabulary. This is a, uh, uh, there is two, this is a cognitive overload for, uh, for them. That's, that is too much. So we, we can avoid that, especially with small talk. It's quite easy to, to write, uh, your message in native language and you can use, we can make them, um, uh, with the accents in French, there is accents. In Spanish, there is accent. We can write the method with the accent. There is no reason we can do that. Then learn from the example. That's the way. That's the way human is working. We copy by design. I mean, uh, we are copier. I mean, which <laughs> we all. We, this is how we are, and this is how we learn, and this is how we improve the things. So there is no sh there is no shame on that. Then uh, when you have this example, okay, you can make some to think with some challenges. So in this challenge, you you have to think a little to make it progressive and to have some okay. Sometimes no no great challenge because okay, it will be easy to get in. And after you can have some uh, a more more difficult challenge, of course. Yeah, we have the example of the pentagon on the heptagon. So um, I have been I have been doing that. Uh, I start this uh, this way of doing. I start just just at the beginning of the pandemic. Uh, so I I think I give one or two lessons. I thought, wow, that's great. Then after we have the shutdown, then I can I can do that anymore. But before doing that, I, I mentioned a failure. What I did before, I wrote a textbook during the summer with, with, with many example challenge. I was very happy of me. Yeah, that's great. I had this old textbook and I think I will give them to the student so they can use it and they, each one will go at his own speed. Oh, that's, that was awful. That was really awful idea. It was too much information for them. There was too, too much information. Oh my, I was, yeah, I say that. Okay. Programming with kids is just an awful idea with small talk. Just forget about that. Oh, that. Then after I discuss with some other teachers, as I mentioned, then we have some reflection. Okay. Maybe if you, so we have this format, which is just one uh, piece of paper with the two sides. And then you have one lesson then on the, on the, on the class, I have a a big binder, I have all the lessons that are ready to take away. And then each student, they take one, some they will say, oh, yeah. they will do, write the code, then do the challenge. And teacher, I finish, what can I do? And they want the next one. So each one will, will go at its own speed without having too much information at one time. And uh, it works very, very, very well uh, doing that way. So after when the, the shutdown uh, was ended, so uh, uh, I get new new class and I continue and I I still see the same interest in the student. It was not an accident. Maybe with one class I have exceptional kids. So the first the first class I did that I have girls and the girl was was really great uh, at doing that. And I think maybe girls are good at programming. And um, and the 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 last one I got uh, uh, last year it was the opposite. Some girls were complaining, oh, it's boring. And some of the boys, they were just excited. So there is no gender in programming. <laughs> I can't tell you that. <laughs> so that, that was good also. That was nice. I think I'm finished. <laughs>
Are your exercises available? So um, I have a blog uh, where I, I discuss this example, but I did not, yeah, they're not available, but I will make them available, yes. Uh, I, will, I will put that I will, uh, on the Dr. Joe website. I will make an archive. So this, uh, they are written in the LibreOffice. So they are, well, they, they will be available in uh, today. Yeah, we do that. After lunch. <laughs> <laughs> or, yeah. During lunch. So, um, well, you know Logo. Logo, yes. yes. How do you, I, I don't know if you can answer this, but and how you compare the way uh, we were taught at that time with Logo and learn how to use Logo to do graphic things and so on with Dr. Gio and the sketch and have okay. have you thought about it? Yes. So uh, personally, uh, at school, I got zero experience in programming. So all the experience I got when I was a kid by, was by my own. So I know I have no experience in Logo. Um, if you look at eToys, eToys follow a bit the same idea of Logo. You mean to have direction and turning, something like that, which is great. Uh, however, I think that when you want to, to link with mathematics, uh, in maths we use the Euclidean, uh, the Cartesian system, for example, for coordinates. So if you use Logo, okay, you have a different system, but you don't make the connection with the maths. So that that's what I find maybe uh, uh, that's a, a minus side of, uh, of Logo, I will say. So of course it's easier, uh, but it's a different approach. On the link with the maths for me is not that easier. Yeah, that's that's my personal uh, thinking uh, on that. I like it and the. The language part, uh, I didn't know that French used a semicolon for like a 2D coordinate. But then looking at that, however, and also there was a thing like two times repeat. And also there was a thing like you always have to say sketch segment mm -hmm. D and A, uh, right? Like, you, I could imagine to have an even simpler language where you don't have to say sketch and you maybe use semicolon for point, which you can do pro. It's not easy to do in small talk, but in English or Japanese, they use comma to say 2D point. And actually you can define comma for number to make a point, no, yeah. no problem actually. So the, that, that kind of sort of even so I could imagine to have an even simpler language that's a little bit different from small talk, but close enough. And have you thought of making like really uh, that kind of DSL? So, yeah, I thought about that, uh, but I did not search how to do that. Uh, so there is a trade-off between, okay, after you move a little away from uh, small talk or to stay in, in small talk, so in one case, you have something that will be closer to the mathematical way of expressing things. Yeah, I thought, uh, I talked about that. I, I thought about that, but uh, I did not really investigate uh, this. Yeah. But that's a good uh, a good point. Yeah. So um, my question is about uh, teaching this, but it looks like you are teaching kids. But uh, if you want this to be bigger. I don't know if you want, then you you also want to teach the teachers, right? So what ideas you have in mind for that? I mentioned my colleagues, uh, my colleague uh, that helped me to design the, so he, he gave me the, the idea. Then after I wrote the, uh, I wrote all the document, the final document on the, so he just, he's, he has a computer background, but not in small talk, I would say, but he just it right away. I mean, uh, the next step will be, of course, to present this to other teacher in my in my department of ICT, not only in the school but also in Geneva, and uh, to introduce that and see how they are ready to get in or not. Okay, this isn't something that I have not done, and this is indeed a challenge. Yeah, I will try. I will tell you how it's go. 
I think there's a lot of interest, especially in Switzerland, in in uh, teaching kids in other, lots of other schools. You in part of any network at all of teachers there? Uh, not at all. I'm super interested. Yeah. I had another question, which is how hard would it be to be how hard would it be to port the core to another small talk? Uh, I guess it relies heavily on the Morphic three. Okay. Uh, keys. So the. Uh, the Nadir is running also, not the new one, the, the new version on the on Faro, for example. But the the effort of porting is quite important. It's doable. It's just a matter of energy on the way. Yeah. So on the first experience I got with the programming was with the Faro version, which the you the 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 UI was less developed, not because of Faro, because I did not elaborate uh, enough at this time. That they were just using uh, a classic workspace that they will fire up a new Windows with the results. So sometimes they have 10 windows of sketch because they don't close it. So I find, oh, that's confusing. So uh, th th that's what the feedback you get when you experiment, you experiment your software with the user. So I think, oh, we need something that is more integrated. I, I start the sketch, I write the sketch there, then the results on the next pen. So I this this UI I wrote it only on uh, on quiz because it came later. Do the kids use the debugger? And if so, how do they feel? So sometimes they have they have a pop up debugger, which I did not. Right now I should capture that and put it on the on the editor windows. It's not done. It's something that's not done. So okay, they say oh, most of the time they will close it. I'm trying to find the error. Okay, but, but the, the debugger that you show on the same uh, case... Ah, this one? Yeah. I think I have not yet used it. Okay, okay the yeah. key is gone. It's new. Okay, okay. Mm -hmm. cool. 